So this video I'll be going over what the uh, shadow rays and light angle actually means when you're dealing with the ray trace shadows on uh, any of these spotlights or a directional light. So I'm going to use a spotlight because I just like how this one works. My recommendation as usual, when you're dealing with these stuff, just make sure you press 7 so you're in lit view. And if you have a nice video card, just turn on viewport 2.0. That way we can actually see how everything's being affected. I'm going to just keep this fairly simple. Increase my cone angle, penumbra, drop off. Just have this much larger. This is we can actually see what's going on. Then I want to have another yeah, this will be okay. What I want you to see is the actual shadow behind the object. Um, I have a slight angle to this, so I'm going to actually see what's going on. I'm going to my render settings right now. I'm just going to use the mass operator because the shadows work the same in Mental Ray and in uh, Maya software unless you actually use a Mental Ray light. We're just using the normal light for now. I'm Maya software here. Change production quality and make sure my ray tracing quality is turned on. I have no reflections, so I'll turn it to zero. Refractions, I don't have any of that. I'll leave my shadows on by default. Go in shadows. Turn on ray trace shadows, and let's look at what look what happens when I just render with the basic settings. If I look at this, just sharp shadows, very harsh. Look at that closer. See very hard shadows. The reason why this is happening is because there's zero light radius, so the light is not spreading at all whatsoever. Let me put this exact on the floor. It's a viewpoint 2.0 bug slightly, so let's try high quality. Yeah, there you go. Much better. I'm gonna change my resolution of my render so it's slightly larger so you can see in the video better. Let's do one K square instead. there we go very harsh strong lines alright I'm gonna go through here select my spotlight and set it to 1 I want you to pay attention to what's happening right now now we have it starting from sharper dropping off so it gets softer and softer as it goes on go across you know there's a lot of dots the dots are because you don't have enough shadow rays if I just simply increase this to 2 you can see what goes on. There are a lot more dots that are filling in the area. Let me just store this image. I guess um, mine is looking for a certain pass that does not exist. Shoot this down a bit. We can see it's stored now. Let's use what uh, Derek told you. Five. If I render this thing, you'll still see spots inside all in the drop off right there. But the higher I have this, the less dots you're going to see. So if we go between the two, we can see the value. That's why I also say number five is not nearly high enough. If I store this thing, amp it up to something like 15, render this thing, you'll see a lot better drop off, a lot smoother, but the render time also suffers. So what you have to do is figure out what the nice balance is, what can you deal with, how many uh, of these do you mind having? So that's a 5. This is a 15. What's happening with yours is these spots here are f changing constantly with every single frame. And because of that, you get this whole flickering look. When you have a high enough value, the spots are smaller, so the flickering almost goes away. Uh, but again, that's all resolution dependent. So if you're working on, let's say, a... Um, a DVD or something, then you're probably working with CCR, Quantel, and TSC. And you render this, because the resolution is smaller, you might, they t typically blend with each other better. So I would say really look at how long it's taking you per frame, how much you're willing to sacrifice, and how much noise is actually affecting your scene. Um, just make sure you save all the different iterations so you can really see what's going on. There goes the 2, there goes the 5, there goes the 15 drastic differences between how much noise there is and the higher you make this the smoother that is um, I mean you could technically amp this up to 30 
which will increase your render time even more. It's not just double, sometimes it's higher than that, sometimes it's less, depending on how complex your actual scene is. By this point, you see zero dots anymore, there's going to be nothing left. But I don't recommend just doubling it or tripling it or whatnot, just slowly amp it up and see, you know, is it worth it or not. That's 15, that's 30, very subtle. You can technically see the noise ingrained in here that completely vanishes when you're dealing with 30. But also look at the render time. This was 7 seconds, that was 14. So, again, weigh out your options. Hope that was useful for you.